Sometimes teachers will ask me why I don't require or have my students write essays. And I tell them I'm a college instructor. My students will be in the workforce in a couple months and they won't have anything to do with essays. Well, I guess unless their kids have to write them in school. But that's kind of the point. Essays are, are a school thing. They're not a, a real world thing. And there's so many other great forms of writing in the real world. Website blurbs and articles and you know newspaper releases and letters and emails, things like that. But some teachers will say, yeah, but, but essays do exist in schools and teachers grade for those things. And so you should, you should teach essays and prepare your students how to write them. I don't. I, I haven't. I didn't do it in early or middle years, or even in high school, and I don't do it even in college. And I have a really good reason for it, and I'd like to show you why. Okay, to help us understand why I don't require or teach students about essays, we're going to look at a piece of writing. This isn't a rare piece of writing, this is a common piece of writing. The first thing I notice is that there's five nice, neat paragraphs. Uh, when I look at the opening paragraph, uh, for example, in the very last sentence, it's a third sentence, it's a, this is a topic sentence, and it kind of lays out the rest of the piece of writing. So and I look at it carefully, it says, we have continued to provide outstanding customer service. And I see those words in the very first sentence of the next paragraph. And then it talks about cutting edge projects. And I see that in the paragraph after that one. And then it talks about innovating to improve the industry. And I see that in the, uh, in the second last paragraph. And then in the very last paragraph, all three of those uh, keywords are again re are repeated in the last paragraph. And that's again, very typical of an essay. And when I asked the student, why did you structure things this way? Why did you choose these five paragraphs? And why did you uh, use this topic sentence? And why is this topic sentence kind of broken down in the rest of your piece of writing? And why is the topic sentence basically restated in the last paragraph? The student said, this is how we did it in high school. This is how they've learned to do it. It's sort of ingrained in their mind. When I take a closer look at some of the paragraphs, um, I see a lot of repetitive language inside the paragraph best products that are available. We want to be the best. Our aircraft always be the best. Again in the closing paragraph I see very similar language. Uh, they want to continue a legacy for decades to come, uh, well into the future, and for a long time to come. And I have this repetitive language that happens inside this, this document. Again when I asked the student about it, they, they brought up a quote that I gave them in class. It was a Steve Piha quote. He says, writers have to get used to saying a lot with a little. And the student, when, when I was conferencing with him, the student said to me, that's not what they learned. That, that they learned that you have to add a lot of fluff to make it long enough. And that's why they're using these repetitive phrases to get their point across. You see, when students write essays, there's almost always strings attached. Length requirements, for example. It has to be so many paragraphs or so many words or so many pages. Another one is, is a structure requirement. You have to have topic sentences here, located at this spot in the, in the opening paragraph. And that has to be repeated throughout. And then the, the closing paragraph has to have a certain structure to it as well. Sometimes there's even word restrictions. You can't use can't or contraction. Sometimes they don't want you to use the word I. You have to use third person and all these word restrictions. And these requirements and restrictions are so unrealistic when it comes to real world writing. We don't see these restrictions in emails, letters, articles, stuff we see on websites and in newspapers. Uh, they just don't exist. But the problem is, is that these strings that are attached are spilling over into other students' writing. This piece of writing that the student produced was not an essay. I had a handful of assignments that students could choose from, and this student chose an assignment where they were picking a company and writing on their company website about what's been going on in the last couple of years at their company, but the student naturally defaulted to an essay-style piece of writing. But when we actually go online, for example, and look at websites that have writing like this, it does not look like an essay at all. So I actually went with the student to a few websites. Here's one from our hometown, talking a little bit about the company, some of the services that they provide, how they focus on clients. It doesn't look anything like an essay. We went to Boeing's website and took a look at Boeing and what they put on their website about their own company and how they focus on community. And, and, and just, again, it doesn't look anything like an essay. But after we took a look at some of this real writing, went back and redid the assignment, it was just so different than the essay that, that the student produced in the first place. So in a nutshell, I don't require or teach my students anything about essays. It does way too much damage and doesn't help them at all when it comes to writing in the real world. Thanks for listening. More to come.